A couple of months ago, I made a flight video for Southern California, which featured 29 Palms Airport, Palm Springs International, and John Wayne Orange County. Because I liked 29 Palms so much, I thought I'd make another more in-depth look just for it. We'll start off with some night lighting, just to show uh, what it likes, looks like at this time of day, however most of the video will be daytime. I was going to make this video a few days ago, but when checking their Facebook page, 29 Palms said that they had a version 1.1 update coming out imminently. So yesterday, when I saw that it was out, I installed it and made this video. There is an updater in the control panel, but this didn't work for me. It downloaded the updates, but then errored out just as it was about to start the installation. So I downloaded the full installer for 1.1, and after setting the control panel to the defaults, I installed it. This worked without a hitch. That static Gulfstream 2 on the apron is indeed one of the new additions in version 1.1, including its animated mechanic. 29 Palms Airport is located in Southern California, not far northeast of Palm Springs. So as I said in the earlier video, they make a great flight pair. With live weather on in Active Sky Next, I actually had a cloudy day despite being in California. So I stuck with it since cloudy conditions add a performance challenge to any scenery. That and the wrecked soft clouds look pretty good here. One of the nice features of KTMP is a sandstorm which blows through randomly every 15 or 20 minutes. When looking towards the source of the sandstorm, one can see kind of a pretty intense blob of sand, but it really looks good when you look at it perpendicularly. Here it is dying down and conditions returning to normal. Another nice feature is the custom road traffic near the airport, also seen earlier in the nighttime shot. Far better looking than default vehicles, See the big rigs and that vehicle is clearly a Hummer behind it. The static aircraft are also very high quality. Even this vehicle parked on the air side is clearly recognizable as a Nissan. Great level of detail. Well it is time to hop in the trusty A2A Cessna 182 Skylane and do a circuit around the airfield and check things out from the air. A couple of things to note about this video. I'm actually using my Alaska slash backcountry settings. So vegetation is maxed and building autogen is very dense. Terrain and cloud shadows are both enabled and all other ground shadows are enabled except for trees receiving shadows. HDR and volumetric fog are enabled as well and cloud coverage density is at max. Now after I had updated to P3D 2.5, it seemed my anti-aliasing had been somewhat affected. So I have added 2x SGSS back into the mix, along with 2x MSAA from the, from the control panel in the, in the sim, and MFAA in the NVIDIA control panel. I also noticed right after installing it that there seemed to be a little bit more stutter for the same settings. Then I read a post on AVSIM that said that multiple SIM connects may cause problems, especially the ESP SIM connect. So I uninstalled all but the 61259 version of SIM connect, and it really did make things smoother. This allowed me to run Autogen at the same levels that I had in 2.4, with probably a smidge more smoothness. I also, it also made ground taxiing a little easier. Before, the slightest touch of the rudder pedals used to send planes swerving dramatically. It is visible in the takeoff here that I can now take off on a relatively straight line. With all of this, I average 37.1 frames per second while flying around KTMP, and I never had less than 1,543 megabytes of VAS remaining per FSUI PC. One additional note though, I did have AI air traffic disabled because there is a nice selection of static aircraft at this airport. 
I do have the compatibility patch for FTX Global enabled, and it does a pretty good job of blending the sceneries. Looking out in the distance, one can really see the cloud shadows at work, giving a great patchwork to the lighting peeking through the clouds. That is one feature completely absent from FSX, and it adds more to the immersion than I thought it would when I first saw the screenshots of it. Especially because how it impacts the visuals changes with the nature of the cloud cover, just as in real life. As with many quality flight sim products these days, it has a pretty comprehensive control panel. For this video, I actually had everything on the control panel maxed out, as you can see, so it is nice that it still performs well. The desert atmosphere here is really well done. These types of environments in Flight Sim are tailor-made for photo imagery as well, since the main surface detail is rock and terrain itself. Adding grasses and shrubs merely completes the picture. Because of this, the impact of the photo imagery is not spoiled at low altitude, like with conventional photo scenery. As we approach, one can see another standstorm cropping up, welcoming us back to KTMP. If you want a small airport that is full of life, performs great, and is convenient to Palm Springs, this is probably the ticket. It also is a welcome change from the northern mountains and fjords. Well, I hope you enjoyed our visit to 29 Palms and less than sunny Southern California in the winter. If you liked what you saw, please hit like and by all means subscribe. Later.